Hi, in this video, I will show you our Google Analytics for Confluence app, how to install it, how to connect it to your Google Analytics property and how to use it. Atlassian Confluence is a great tool. You can use it for collaboration, you can use it as a wiki system or simple as a single source of truth for all your data. But after a couple of years, and especially in bigger organizations, it could be a little bit difficult to figure out which page is important, which page is often edited, or where happen the most comments. So one solution for it could be to connect Google Analytics to your Confluence instance. But this is only one use case. We have several more prepared. I want to show you how to install the application in your Confluence instance now, and after this, how to connect it to your property. I prepared a complete new Confluence instance with a couple of test pages. So you just go to find new apps. Take the orange one. And try it for free. The installation takes a couple of seconds, but it's normally done very quickly. At the same time, I prepared already a Google Analytics instance and we need to create a new property in a couple of seconds to connect it to the Confluence site. The installation is done. You can jump now direct to, conf to the configuration or to the getting started. So the getting started is a simple step-by-step -step guide um, it's also available in our documentation uh, for the installation, but it gives you a very good overview which steps are necessary to install uh, the application. But let's start it with that. So we'll go back to Manage Apps. Click on, and we click on Google Analytics and Configure. Our Google Analytics application asks now to connect an analytics account. And for this, you need to decide if you want to use the universal analytics, but you can also use uh, the new GA41. At the moment, we recommend the universal analytics because the functionality is much more complete. GA4 is still a little bit in a beta version style. It has some interesting views but a complete picture of a web presence or in this case of your Confluence instance is better with a universal analytics standard. So first of all, I haven't created a new property. So um, maybe you have already your property uh, in your Google Analytics instance, but let's do it quickly that you can also get an idea how to create a property in Google Analytics. You click on create property. German time, so currency is fine. Show some advanced options. We want to use the universal analytics and we need to enter our website. And this is the domain which you can take from here. So our Confluence instance. So and we only want to create the universal analytics uh, property. So now back in Confluence, you can just click on sign in with Google. You need to give the authorization. We choose the account. So now we need to verify that this is really our instance, yes it is. And we need to give access, a read access and also write access um, for our application to Google Analytics because we're also creating some additional segments and categories which makes your life much easier in monitoring and reporting the usage of your Confluence instance. So let's say continue. We have an OK, so that's fine. Now you can see that our Google Analytics application is connected to Google. So what you can do now is you can simply decide which user is allowed to see 
Google Analytics data in Confluence. I will show it a little bit later to you what it exactly is, but at the moment we need to define who is allowed to this and we simply say it's our administrators and also our Confluence users. We need to select our Google account. Uh, often it helps to have a quick check again what is our account here and we are in the Shopcore account and our property name is test for confluence so that's exactly what we want to connect so shopcore account test for confluence and then we need to select a view at the moment we have just one view there so you can see it here in this view settings it's the all website data view So these are the necessary steps for the connection. For having now all informations perfect sorted in Confluence, but also in Google Analytics, we need to create some additional dimensions. And we simplified a little bit your life. Instead of creating these dim dimensions manual, we set up an automatic process for that. So simple click on set dimensions. Are you sure? Yes, we want to do it. And refresh and we can see all dimensions are correct set up. Click on save and that's all what we need to do on this configuration. When you now go to a space you will see our application in the left menu. You can also find the Google Analytics application in the top menu and also later in the page uh, menus. The main reason for this is that our Google Analytics app provides Google Analytics reporting also direct in Confluence. And you can analyze this on the global level, on a space level, but also on the page level. And this is interesting to have a deeper understanding what happens in your Confluence instance. When we now go to our global level, you see that no data is found because we haven't visited any pages uh, so far on our Confluence instances. So, and this also explains um, the tracking starts when you have installed the app. So we are not capable to take history data before you have installed the application. So when we go now to our Google Analytics property, you can see here in this live view, there's already one user and we are on a general page. So yes, we have already visits. And simple, let's create a little bit traffic on this basis that we can see that our Google Analytics app is tracking stuff. Let's comment a page. In some cases, the real-time view is not 100% correct in general uh, in Google Analytics because uh, a lot of the magic of Google Analytics happens a couple of hours later when Google analyzes the data and also bring all page views with users' behavior data and acquisition data together. But for a first test, that's exactly uh, what we want to see. You can also see the page views in the last 30 minutes and here are all clicked pages. Another interesting point is that we also analyze events and we analyze a couple of events. You can see uh, two examples. So my last page edit, for example, is an event page updated. So means this allows you to create reports. How often was a page updated in space X, Y, Z, in time frame X, Y, Z. But also comments create an additional action. Uh, these are the steps for the basic installation. But you can set up optional features. And one example is the site search feature. We created the possibility that you can analyze what your users search in Confluence. This gives you potentially new ideas for additional content. So let's say every employee is searching how to book a vacation and you don't have a how to book a vacation page at the moment in Confluence, that's potentially a very nice recommendation 
to create this page or to update the page because maybe your page is a little bit unclear or could be optimized. Setting up site search analytics is relatively easy. We simply need to copy this uh, uh, parameters here in our universal analytics property. So we go back to admin, to our view settings, and here we can find the site search tracking. And now it's asking for the query parameter. It's um, confluence text. That's all if you want to set up the site search for your Confluence instance. So your setup is done. Um, and yeah, it would be a little bit lame without showing you how it looks like in Confluence when you have a little bit more traffic and a little bit more traffic and actions. Uh, on your instance, which are viewable in Google Analytics and in Confluence. So let me switch to a different instance. On this Google Analytics view, we can already see that users are active on this Confluence instance over time. And you can use Google Analytics like you use it for other pages, etc. So you have all your audience views, um, for example. What you also can see is a classic page analytics so which pages are the most clicked pages, how much time people spend on uh, these pages, what is the bounce rate, what is the exit rate, etc. There are many different use cases where you can analyze these numbers and can figure out what is the situation for the specific page or specific space. But not every user has access to Google Analytics. And as we can see already, Google Analytics is not an easy peasy simple tool where every user should have access and can easily use all the information. So we decided to give some of these informations direct, or we decided to put some of the Google Analytics information back to Confluence that a bigger group of users can analyze the content and can take actions based on their analytic results. So let's jump on the Google Analytics global overview. The global overview contains all spaces, all pages in your Confluence instance. You can choose the time frame or you can specify very individually your time frame, for example last 30 days and then you have the possibility to choose different metrics um, so for example these are classic page hit, hits you can also search for sessions how many users have consumed other stuff and, and you can choose between day week and months below the graph you have the possibility to have all these information sorted. So we have a space overview, which shows you the top spaces um, sorted on number of hits. And you have a page overview, um, a content overview, which shows you the top pages, um, for example, with hits, sessions, and so on. You can decide how many rows you want to see and bigger instances, this could be a long list. If you're now on the point, okay, that's nice to see it globally, but I have a specific project and I want to understand a little bit more how users consume this specific space, then you can also use the app on a space level. So simple choose the space, go to our Google Analytics app, and now you have the same possibilities to analyze the data like on the global level, but on the space level. An interesting point is also to analyze pages based on activities. Comments created and comments updated are interesting KPIs to figure out, okay, where happens all the action in the Confluence instance. You have also the possibility to open the Google Analytics on every page. So similar to the space level, you have the Google Analytics menu item on the left or on the top. On the top, it opens in addition 
a smaller version of the analytics with the filters, but you can also go direct to the bigger version of these analytics. Remember, you can limit the access to all these Google Analytics data. Maybe you don't want that every user can analyze the performance of the page. So simple limited to specific confluence groups and you are fine. I hope this video was interesting for you. If you have questions or comments, please leave it below or contact us directly. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.